Welcome to another in our series of InterGraph CADWorks and Analysis Solutions videos featuring Caesar 2. Okay, so if I have um, nonlinears in my model, I will specify in row 1 what load case I wish to use to set the nonlinear restraints. I click on the cell, I get a drop list of all that already run static load cases, and I click on them, and it'll drop the load in there, or the load case in there. Row 2. That's a stiffness factor for friction. Again, if it's a zero, it's not used, and I type a number in there to uh, use as that multiplier times mu times n from the load case selected in, in row one. All right, that's my nonlinear issues. Now, uh, stopping the eigensolver. Okay, if I have, uh, let's say, 30 nodes in my piping system, and I'm doing a lump mass model, that would give me 90 degrees of freedom, x, y, z for, for each node. And I might have, let's say, 10 or 15 restraints in the model, uh, vector restraints, which will delete modes of vibrate, nodes, degrees of freedom. Restraints delete degrees of freedom from the model because it can't move, they're not free. Uh, so I had 90, now I'm back down, minus 15, I'm at that, uh, 75 degrees of freedom. I can calculate 75 modes of vibration because I have 75 degrees of freedom. So if I've got a thousand degrees of freedom, I can have a thousand modes of vibration. Am I interested in those very high modes of vibration? No, not, not for what we're doing. We're looking at uh, lower modes of vibration, low frequency vibration, because we're looking at structural response of the piping system. We're watching the system move off its center line, and as it moves, it's going to be the lower modes that we're going to uh, uh, see this bending coming out of our piping system. Okay, those higher modes, the highest modes, are usually the axial modes of vibration. The pipe is just, just uh, let's say, breathing in and out. That's certainly not what we're analyzing with Caesar two. Now, our eigen solver starts with the lowest mode first. If I'm doing a, let's say, a seismic analysis. I'm going to have my, I don't, I don't really care about what's happening above 33 hertz because above 33 hertz, if I have a natural frequency, let's say 50 hertz in my piping system, the ground can't excite it. It will follow that ground exactly. Uh, seismic uh, loads uh, are, are responded to in a rigid fashion in piping systems of modes greater than 33 hertz. And that's why our default frequency cutoff is 33 hertz. We'll see that in a second here. Now, if I'm doing a uh, fast acting load, so let's say a fluid hammer or something like that, I might be concerned about frequencies up to 100 hertz or even higher. So there, in these cases, for these types of loads, I want, want, might want to increase my frequency cutoff up to 33 hertz, beyond 33 hertz, up to 100 or maybe 200 hertz. Depends on the speed of your machine and the uh, size of the model. It doesn't really cost you too much to do that. In many cases, if you're worried about environmental loads, harmonic loads like uh, equipment vibration or acoustic vibration or pulsation, usually you're, you're much lower than even 33 hertz. So if you need to, you can uh, stop it even before 33 hertz. So again, we're not going to calculate all the modes of vibration. We're just going to calculate those that are important to us, and we'll set that cutoff. We have two ways of setting that cutoff. One, we can actually set the frequency cutoff like 33 hertz. Or we can say, I want the first five modes of vibration, or the first six modes, or the, only the first mode of vibration. If I do not specify that number, it ignores that check completely. Whoever hits its limit first will stop the, the solution. And usually the frequency cutoff is used by itself. So here we are, these two cells, there's our maximum number of eigenvalues, that's default to zero, which means it's not going to be used. And then the frequency cutoff by default, set up for seismic analysis, 33 hertz. Now, uh, the next, let's go back, the next uh, row, row five, talks about the mass model, lumped or consistent. Well, for many years, Caesar II and most all analysis tools ignored rotational inertia and the off-diagonal mass terms, okay? Uh, your mass is just x, y, z at node 10, x, y, z at node 20, x, y, z at node 30, no rotation, no off-diagonal terms. That's what we've always called the lumped mass model. Again, that bowling ball thing where we're watching these bowling balls move back and forth, being attached to one another by springs. But today's technology allows us to develop that complete mass matrix. That's what we're calling the consistent mass approach. That came in the CG2, I think, in version 5.0. 
So uh, for a couple of years now, we've had this consistent mass. We still default to the lumped mass model, and it's up to you, if you wish, to set it to the consistent mass. Consistent mass will more accurately determine the frequencies without modification of the model. It's a better tool. It's a little slower because it has more work to do, but it will give you better values. But I've got to make this clear. Simply because you go to consistent mass model will not allow you to assume that you have the proper mode shapes. You may need extra degrees of freedom in order to calculate the shapes of the piping system. So we'll have to talk about that later. So here's a, a simple illustration of lumped mass versus consistent mass. Uh, for years, we just had to store this vector uh, in Caesar to run the analysis. Now, this is only two nodes. This is going to be node 10, node 20. And if, for every node in the piping system, you've got this huge matrix building up. Well, now we're going to keep all this data in the consistent mass matrix. So a lot more data to store, but these machines can handle it. What I do to uh, select consistent mass is just to click on the cell that lumped, and then it will have a drop down with lumped and consistent, and I select consistent. The last item here, uh, the storm sequence check, uh, it defaults to yes. Uh, I have no reason to turn it off. Uh, it's a, a, a quick back check on the calculated frequencies. I see our eigensolver as a search routine that will find system natural frequencies one at a time going from the lowest to the highest. Sometimes this, this search routine discovers these uh, frequencies out of sequence. Okay? And if I select uh, one out of sequence near my cutoff, I might actually skip over a frequency or two and have to come back and I won't know that. But the storm sequence check is a separate check on the total number of modes below the last frequency produced. If this count that the storm sequence processor has doesn't match the eigensolver total, the program will say that the check failed. Okay? And then you will either increase the frequency cutoff or, or take a closer look at the model and, 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 and reanalyze it with, uh, like I said, a higher frequency cutoff. It's a very cheap in terms of time uh, insurance that no mode is missing. And it's not such a big problem with today's VCs. Now, um, that's that, that last cell, row six. Yes, usually I leave it to yes and, and go with that. Okay, we're ready to run an analysis now. Uh, push the button. Well, actually, well, then we'll push this button. We'll do the error check, run the analysis, and then we're left with this screen here, the output menu. Again, we just say modal analysis. This is the output menu for modal analysis. What the heck are we looking at here? There is no load here. Well, the natural frequency calculation or the mode shape calculation is not related to load whatsoever. It is a system characteristic. What would the system want to do? What is, are its tendencies in terms of vibration? But not any load. So people ask, what, how much does it move? Well, you can't answer that question when you're talking about a modal analysis. But we do have some some uh, screen, some field, some output to look at over here. Okay, so the first item is the uh, natural frequency report. Okay, and uh, if I look at that, click on that that item. How do we do that? We click on let's say natural frequencies and click on the show on the screen button or send out the word. And I see this. So in this model, frequency cutoff is 33 hertz. Uh, it calculates the first five modes of vibration. The sixth mode is over 33, so that's why it shuts down there. And here is the uh, frequency in cycles per second, the, the angular frequency in radians per second, and the, the period in seconds per cycle. Okay? So uh, that's the, the, the numbers associated with that mode of vibration, the frequencies. That's half of the pair. The other half is the mode shape. Now, the mode shapes, uh, we have two different reports in Caesar 2. I almost always look at the unity normalized, uh, but the mass normalized is about the same thing. The mass normalized mode shape is the tendency of that mode's contribution to the overall response to the applied load, with everything else being equal. We're not saying where you're applying the load or, or what the, the magnitude of the load is, but when we end up putting load on this system, the mass normalized will show you how much that mode wants to contribute compared to other modes of vibration. The unity normalized mode shape, here, here's the mass normalized, 
the um, unity normalized has a maximum value of 1. So here I look at the mass normalized, the maximum value is 1.6. This one is 1.0. So all these values are divided by 1.6 to give you these values here. They have the exact same shape but different magnitude. Now you might notice in this model that uh, there is no uh, response in the x and z direction. For this analysis, I deleted the mass in the x and z direction. I only watched it wag up and down in the y direction. Okay. Now on the mass model, the next uh, report that we can have, this will give us the results from that calculated mass distribution. This was a simple cantilever from 100 to 200. And they're equally spaced. So at the ends, we got half the mass that we have in every intermediate node. So we have, um, uh, again, this shows it that zeroed out in the x and z directions. And we have a nice consistent mass through the, the system. If I go to a, that's lumped mass, if I go to a consistent mass approach, then I see I have different values in here. And I also have all these rotational terms as well. Don't be concerned that uh, the rotational terms are zero for the lumped mass model. Uh, I believe one of the NRC guidelines say that that is adequate for uh, piping analysis. You don't have to include these rotational terms unless you've got some operator on some valve. Then you might want to include those automatic uh, include those in your analysis. Uh, the next item: active boundary conditions. Um, th again, the focus here: the word active. The best way to describe this this example: here's my input for a model. And I'm going to heat it up. And here's my operating position. I'm going to lift off node 30, lift off 30, and I'm resting at node 40. So if I use this load case to set my nonlinear supports, what will Caesar 2 do? Well, I'll select, let's say, the operating load case. That will set these supports accordingly. And when I look at the active boundary condition report, I will see that node 30, I have zero stiffness at that plus y, node 30. And at node 40, I will have rigid stiffness, 10 to the 12th. That's our rigid stiffness in Caesar 2. So you can examine which supports are active and inactive by looking at this report in your, your modal analysis output. Now, of course, we talk about dynamics here. And uh, there's certainly a good reason to uh, uh, take a look at those mode shapes. Those numbers that we saw over here were rather dull, that, that, uh, these reports here. Uh, but if I click on this button here, that play button, I guess you call it, we can take a look at the animations. So I'm going to open up Caesar, finally. And I'm going to go into this output for the job called cantilever. I'll get to right where we are right now. Output, spectrum mode. I can go to animation here, but let's just do this one to see the same screen we have right here. And here we are, and there's the natural frequency. I'm going to click on the animation button. And here's our, our output screen in Caesar 2. Uh, I can look at the volume, mo uh, volume plot or just a center line plot. And here are the natural frequencies of my piping system that we saw earlier in the list. And we're currently pointing to the first mode of vibration. Now, I only have mass in the y direction because that's the way I set it up. I'm going to look down the z direction, clicking on the letter z, and say, show me the volume motion. There's the first mode of vibration. Okay. It's a classic cantilever anchor over here. Uh, all the pipe is on one side of the center line or the other side of the center line. If I go to mode number two at 2.9 hertz, here we see that we have one nodal point not like the node number, but a nodal point, a point that doesn't move at all. And then we have an, an inflection point, And some of the pipe is above the center line, and some of the pipe is below the center line. Mode number three, now we have two nodal points and two inflection points, and so on. Up to mode six, and it goes from there. Now, this is a very detailed model. I've got, uh, I guess, 100 nodes along this run, okay? And I can show this fine detail of all this vibration. I can go up to maybe a couple hundred hertz and still show it nice. This is uh, a, a very special model, let's say. I'm going to look at another model now, something that's not so simple as that. And uh, 
you might like this one. Go into my output. Once again, in the animation. Oh, uh, there. How about this? We're going to make the program move a little bit. I've got an anchor over here and the first mode of vibration. Show that. Again, that's a simple cantilever motion. The piping is just wagging up and down with all these masses along it. I'll jump to mode number two now. Now it's wagging in the horizontal. I didn't re remove all the degrees of freedom in the horizontal di direction. Okay, so there's the first mode is in the Y. Basically, the second mode is in the the X. Mode number six. The whole system is wagging around. Basically, all each letter is staying pretty rigid, and it's mainly the the cantilever that that's vibrating. Uh, got an anchor over here. Mode number eight. Now we see. This is, a, this is a mode of vibration of the entire piping system, but you see the response from the letter S, okay, some wagging back here. But again, this is a total system response. Mode 12, things start wagging all, you've got different letters doing different things, the S and the E's wagging around a little bit more. Uh, and finally, mode 14, I'll look at that one. And really wagging back and forth more than anything else. So uh, we get an idea of what these systems can do by looking at these, these animated mode shapes. Thank you for sharing your time with us. For Caesar 2 news, success stories, and free webinars, please Google Caesar Insider blog.